Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Adam, I'm from the UK and I'm currently living in Singapore, posting videos about my life here because it's the only place that I can go to at the moment. Thanks to everyone who's been watching my recent videos. As ever, if you are enjoying the content, please do subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out. And I always want to hear from you, so I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this video and any of my videos in the comment section below. Um, I'll try and get back to everyone who comments. Now, today, I'm talking about the subject of travel, actually. In case you haven't noticed, there's a global pandemic on at the moment. And that's made international travel a little trickier than it normally would be. Here in Singapore, for most people, if they want to come to the country at the moment, they have to do two weeks quarantining in a hotel room. Now, that's not only expensive, it's also pretty boring. And for most people, that's a fair bit of annual leave as well. Now, Singapore knows it can't really rely on domestic tourism like some countries because it's so small here and there's not that many places to go. So they came up with a solution, the so-called travel bubble, as they tried to get a situation where people could go to Hong Kong and people from Hong Kong could come here without quarantining. All sounds pretty good, right? And in theory, it was a good plan. But as ever in 2020, things went a little bit wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why the travel bubble has failed at the moment and a little bit more about how it was all meant to work. Now the premise was actually quite simple. If you'd been in either Singapore or Hong Kong for the last 14 days, you were eligible to take part in this travel experiment. Now the first thing that you would have to do is apply to fly on one of the specific travel bubble flights. Um, there were originally going to be two flights a day, one from either direction on Cafe Pacific or Singapore Airlines with the idea that being once people were traveling regularly, they would up the limit and there would be more uh, flights allowed every day. I think it was gonna go up to four at the moment. Um, and they were looking at around 200 people um, on each flight as well. Now, before you went, you had to get tested 72 hours before your flight and obviously the test had to come back negative. Then when you land in the other country, you have to have another test at the airport that has to come back uh, negative as well. Then 72 hours before you fly back to the country you came from, you have to have another test. And then when you land in the country again, you have to have one more test. So uh, we're looking at a total of four COVID tests, um, which is gonna add up financially. Additionally, um, there were air travel passes that you had to apply for um, and Singapore you had to apply to get back into the country as well. Now, one of the main risks with this is of course catching this virus and being stuck in another country. And it was agreed that if you do get stuck in the other country, you are responsible for any healthcare costs that you need, any costs of quarantining in that country, um, and then obviously you would have to buy a new flight as well. So in theory, it sounds like a faff. It's not travel as we knew it, but let's be honest, it was never going to be at the moment. But flights, well, they got snapped up. When they were released, people were buying them in their droves and the prices, of course, went straight up. I was one of those people. I was due to be flying to Hong Kong on Christmas Day uh, and coming back to Singapore just after New Year. I wasn't looking forward to the tests and I wasn't looking forward to seeing how much it was all going to cost. But after a long time cooped up in Singapore, it felt like the right thing to do and a good way to spend Christmas. Now, how would it fail? Well, there was a quite simple rule. If the number of unlinked cases in either country, this is the rolling average, so the, the average over seven days of cases of COVID-19 where they don't know where the person got it from, if that number goes above five, then the arrangement would be canceled for two weeks and then they would reassess again. Now, before the travel bubble was due to start, one day before, in fact, it was postponed. Now, the number of unlinked cases in Hong Kong hadn't actually gone above five, um, but what was happening was it was clear that the situation was getting pretty bad there. There were some dark words coming out of the government and there was fears of a fourth wave of infections in Hong Kong. So it was decided that rather than let the flights go and start this to much hoo-ha around the world, there was a lot of media interest. They thought, right, we're gonna hold things. We don't want it to collapse straight away. Let's give it two weeks and reassess. In that two weeks, well, things got a lot worse in Hong Kong. 
Um, the limits on the number of people who can dine in at restaurants has gone to two. I think now a lot of restaurants are even closing. Uh, children are le- no longer going to school. Um, there's curfews and stay at home orders have also been given out as well. Doesn't really sound like the sort of place that you want to be at the moment. It felt inevitable and it became a reality that the travel bubble had to be postponed again. This time it wasn't for two weeks. This time it was postponed indefinitely. Well, until at least 2021 anyway. So the main reason that it failed, in all honesty, is Hong Kong. They've yet again failed to control um, the COVID-19 infections. Singapore at the moment doing a much better job. They were keeping their part of the bargain, but Hong Kong was failing. It may also have failed as well because there was a lot riding on this. There was a lot of pressure to get this right. This was seen as something that could save the airline industry and the tourism industry, at least until there's a vaccine anyway. So there was a lot of attention and a lot of focus and a lot of pressure. And therefore that meant that everything had to be right. Because everything had to be right, they couldn't take any risks. And therefore, when things looked like they were going wrong, they had to cancel it. And maybe it also failed because maybe it was just a bad idea. Maybe in the middle of a global international pandemic that has seen millions of cases, hundreds of thousands of deaths, maybe we aren't meant to be traveling around the world like we're living in the olden days where there was no virus and no COVID. Maybe at the moment it is just safer to stay at home. And yes, it's tough for the travel industry. I totally understand um, the situation that people in that industry are facing. But maybe at the moment we aren't meant to be traveling any kind of quarantine free travel arrangements. Maybe they're a bad idea because ultimately countries that have done very well at controlling this virus have got strict quarantine rules for anyone coming into the country uh, with most of those countries having their borders closed. So let me know what you think. I'd love to know uh, your thoughts on why this arrangement has failed. Do you think it will happen again or do you think Singapore will look elsewhere? There's talk of maybe Japan, Australia, Taiwan, other countries getting involved in their own travel bubble arrangements. Uh, um, Did you have flights booked or were you considering it or do you think it's just a terrible idea? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you on what you think about quarantine free travel. When's it going to come back to Singapore? Um, And will will we see the day again when people just randomly stroll into the country and there's no problem at all? Fingers crossed. 